I'm a firm believer every action should have a purpose and every purpose should have a meaning. So I've put 14, 15 years of graft into this craft. So what makes you think you're going to do that within a year? When you have a busy life, prayer becomes hard. But if you pray hard in a busy life, your busy life becomes easy. The pressures we have as a South Asian community is absolutely shocking, you know. Uh, and I'm a firm believer of that, you know what I mean? I've practiced what I preach, the love, got married not long ago. There was no wedding, there was just a nikah, and that's it. Do you know what I mean? And keep it moving. Know your level, stay in your lane. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Someone's got a Bugatti, you don't need a Bugatti. It's, yeah. it's out of your, it's out of your, I can't get a Bugatti, it's out of mine. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I know mine, I'll stay in it. I follow a protocol in life uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's called uh, Control, Can't Can Conclude. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode at the CEO Club. Today I have with me Waheed Aesthetics. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Okay then, Bob, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure to be on uh, the CEO Club. Uh, great podcast, I've seen a lot of their work and it's an honour to be on here. Uh, I'm Waheed Aesthetic, well known as Waheed Aesthetic. Uh, and like I said, we established before, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, owner of uh, multiple successful uh, businesses. Okay, so do you want to dive into those businesses a little bit? So what kind of ventures are you in at the moment? Uh, so we own multiple gyms. We've got Aesthetic Alder Fitness Club. We've got Aesthetic Underground. Uh, we've got Aesthetic Nutrition. And uh, da, 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 da. yeah, we'll stick to them three. So we'll try and cover those three, uh, three in this podcast. So let's start off by taking it back. You growing up, where did you grow, did you grow up in Birmingham? Or? I grew up in uh, Birmingham, an area called Borsal Heath, uh, okay. which is uh, da, 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 central Birmingham. Yeah. What Central was life like growing up? Uh, just like every other teenager uh, or every other kid, uh, playing football on the streets, uh, going to school, uh, you know, like every other kid, you go through the process, you get in trouble, mischievous, nothing uh, on, not, nothing extraordinary, uh, but just a normal life, it's been blessed. What, what do you say, working community. class? Working, working class. Working class. Community. Working class, you know what I mean? My dad's uh, been working, he's just retired as of late. Mum's... Uh, Typical Asian uh, woman who, you know, helped uh, raise the children. Okay. So what did your dad do for work? Uh, my dad for work was a, a driver. Uh, so what he would do is, uh, so same with uh, women from the South Asian community that were looking for work, etc. There used to be farms in them days where people would uh, pick up fruit, cherry picking, tomato picking, etc. So we'd collect the women, take them to the farm, collect their fruits or whatever, and then drop them back off home at the end of the day. Oh, mashallah, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what made you get into business then? Uh, it was nothing that I thought from the get-go, I want to be getting into business, etc. It just happened, but thank God. Uh, obviously, I went to college, I went to university, uh, higher education, studied sports, exercise science, I'm the bachelor in science. Uh, and then uh, from there, I was PTing. Uh, from the PTing, I thought, you know, Let's take it a bit further. I got into uh, a personal training studio. So a personal training studio was a bespoke uh, studio made specifically for one-to-one -one clients where people feel more at ease and more comfortable training. Because, you know, you go to a gym environment, the first thing is thinking, oh my God, there's going to be so-and-so there, I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. So mine was private, making clients feel comfortable. And then uh, from there, I opened up a gym. And then from there, I'm doing another gym. And then we've got into the nutrition side of it also. Mashallah. So the first thing you did was the studio and then you went into opening up your own gym. Is that yeah. leasing your own place and, and sort of setting it up or how did it work? Uh, so initially, exactly what's happened is with uh, the personal training studio, uh, even the personal training studio, to be fair, it cost quite a bit of money because uh, it's all pretty much a gym, but it was based in a private area. Then we've gone into a commercial gym, uh, commercial gym, about 9,000 square foot. Uh, and saying that was... A lot of, it was a risk, but it was a risk to reward, obviously. You work it out. And then from there, I was running my personal training. From that gym. And what makes you stand out from the competition? Because there's so many personal trainers out there. What differentiates you from, from everyone else? Uh, Sam, I wouldn't want to discredit anyone's work, but uh, I've been in this game for about 14, 15 years. You know, I've got an uh, education behind me, which is always good. You know, it wasn't a six week or a 12 week course. This is, like I says, pfft, seven, eight years of studying. Uh, furthermore, I've always practiced what I've preached. Alhamdulillah, you know what I mean? I've been a successful bodybuilder. Uh, and then with anything coaching or personal training, what do you look at? You look at results. And Alhamdulillah, I've got results for over the last 10 years. 
So you're looking in good shape oh, thank by you, about bro. now. Um, so just to dive into your sort of PT, I think you mentioned earlier before we started the podcast where you were talking about the industry at the moment and where it's at. What do you say is going on right now with everything in the personal training industry? Uh, personal training and fitness industry, uh, it's refreshing to see so many people wanting to be involved in the fitness industry. It's, it's amazing. But then at the same time, I also feel there's a lot of messages out there which are not true. Uh, so for instance, you know, there's, like I said, it's great to see so many coaches and so many fitness enthusiasts coming through wanting to do what they want to do. But how are you, um, what accolades or credentials do you have in order to work with somebody and be able to tell what their diet should be, what the training program should be? A six week course surely is not enough to be in charge of someone's health and fitness. But like I says now, uh, I'd say pff, five in 10 people who go to the gym are coaches. Yeah, <laughs> there like, is a lot of coaches. I've yeah, seen it online yeah. myself. Every time you look on Instagram, social media, there's, a, there's an online is coach. I think it's a fashion at this moment in time. And I feel like pioneers of the game uh, uh, would always stay there in it because obviously they've, they've been doing it long enough. Yeah, and there's that substance there. So a lot of people tend to just come on. I've seen it from my own experience where they'll create a little online training program and try and sell you that for 20, 30 quid or wherever it is um, and they make a fortune out of it. It's, it's great. Like I said, it's refreshing to see. But then at the same time, if you was to sit down with one of these coaches and say, okay, you've done this exercise. What is the reason for this exercise? You've done this amount of reps. What is the reason for this reps? You've given this in the diet. What is the reason behind this diet? I'm a firm believer. Every action should have a purpose and every purpose should have a meaning. Uh, and as long as a coach could do that, great man, happy days. You've got a great coach. Yeah. And what kind of struggles have you faced in your journey leading up to becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, you know, with any entrepreneur journey, everyone will f have struggles. Uh, and this should get mentioned, you know what I mean? It's not, you, you open up a, a business and that's it, it's happy days. You know, there's a lot of stuff which happens. You know, there's bills, there's uh, rent, there's wages, there's bloody licenses for music now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, then there's uh, wild service charges. There's a lot to it. Do you know what I mean? And then you had the whole COVID backlash where everything was just shut. And the bills are still going out. And the bills yeah. are still going out. So there's always going to be a lot. But as long as you're content, uh, you'll be happy with it. And with like any advice I'd give to an entrepreneur who's looking to open up a business, etc., don't just think about the money you're going to make or, you know, a hypothetically talking, potentially you can see me and I'd like to think I'm a successful in what I'm doing. Uh, and you can say, you know what, he's doing well, bam, I want to be a PT. But you've got to realise I've put 14, 15 years of craft, no graft, sorry, into my craft. So I've put 14, 15 years of graft into this craft. So what makes you think you're going to do that within a year? Do you know what I mean? You can't buy experience yeah social you know media I mean? you want that a lot of people want that overnight success overnight yeah and what comes quick goes quick you know yeah. i mean i'm a firm believer of that so yeah. you can't buy that you can't bypass that time you know you've got to put the mileage in and uh i believe with entrepreneurs they've got to realize that you know you can't just hypothetically see a blueprint and think yeah i could do this as well you've got to know your craft and the only way you're going to know your craft is by doing the graft i yeah. like that quote yeah, that's a good quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good little clickbait quote of that. Uh -huh. um, so for yourself, uh, you set up this business. Did you have to invest quite a bit of money into it? Oh, yeah, it was, was it? It was, a, it was a, a large sum amount of money for myself. Yeah. I'm not speaking in behalf of other entrepreneurs. Is or that other for people. setting up the gym or like what? what Even what the personal business? training studio. The personal training studio was uh, a substantial, substantial amount of money. At that time when I opened the personal training studio, it cost me in the region of about £40,000. £40,000. £40,000. Uh, but at that time, like I says, how I made my money, which is important, I mention it as well. I was doing uh, stalls in the market. So when I was at university, um, obviously I was staying at home. So, uh, you know, you get a loan then, you know, when uh, to get by uni, etc. Student loan, yeah. Student loan. Uh, and then I was getting bursaries, playing football at the university, etc. I never wasted my money on chocolates and sweets. I bought a, I bought a, a market stall. Uh, in Wellsborough Market, Wellsborough Market is potentially the biggest market in the Midlands. Uh, and then from there, I used to sell uh, various stuff like chicken pakoras and kebab meat and chips, ah. etc. Uh, so I do that every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
And uh, it wasn't life-changing money, but it was enough money to get me by. And then at the same time, I was part, uh, PTing as well from Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and then whatever I could gather, then I borrowed some off uh, family and friends and I opened a personal training studio. Yeah. And then from the personal training studio, alhamdulillah, that went really well. Uh, I started to do various stuff for various people, like, you know, magazines. I was working with Asiana Magazine, which was the UK's largest magazine at the time. So I used to be their health and fitness guru. So that was a good pay in itself. Uh, and then I also used to, also used to model uh, okay. the normal, traditional Asian modeling, uh, yeah. as well as the fitness modeling. Uh, okay. So yeah, income was coming from there. Then I always put that money aside and then we opened up a gym and then the gym in itself, what, we're looking at about 130, 140 grand. Wow, as an initial investment. As an initial Is it your own place, lease place kind of thing? It's or? rented. The rented place, it's the, yeah. the building in itself is rented, but everything in there is mine. Okay. And what differentiates that gym from all the other gyms? Like, what have you done to make sure you stand up? The gym up? in itself is the same, like I said, no, uh, I don't want to belittle nothing about, you know what I mean? I'm very passionate about fitness, health, fitness, etc. And I've been around uh, the industry long enough to know what we need, the environment we need to build, uh, the the members of staff, the people who are training there. Do you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, like I says, we've got British champions in there who train there on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got some of the best coaches uh, in the country. You know what I mean? And that's not myself. I've got other people who are coaches, the likes of Scott, Troy, Theo, you know, hold tight, the boys, Swench Gang. You know, they're also at the based at the headquarters, Aesthetic Health and Fitness Club. I've got my brother, uh, Maz, who's a very successful bodybuilder, who is also there. And with that, like I says, if you was to come to the gym, there's no reason why you would get it wrong because there's so much knowledge there. It's a fountain of knowledge. Do you know what I mean? Everyone could, you can learn of everyone. Uh, then at the same time, we've made it uh, very friendly. So it's not just a hardcore bodybuilding gym. Okay. We've made it friendly for someone who's not into bodybuilding, just wants to do some health and fitness. It's also, like I says, friendly enough for your mother to go. You know what I mean? I have classes there where a, a group of uh, young ladies in the age of 70 plus come and they feel so wow. comfortable at their place. So it's a nice little uh, balance. You create the right culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, we've got the boxing involved in there also. Yeah, I think a lot of people, especially when you're beginning off going into a gym, it can be quite intimidating, especially when you, you feel like everyone's looking at you, even though they're not looking at you. Yeah, yeah. It's like subconsciously you feel like, all eyes are on you or you might be doing the weight wrong or uh, is that like a, a sort of normal thing? It's million, million percent normal. Do you know what I mean? That, and I learned that from uh, personal training initially. Anyone that comes through the door in a gym and they're not in the physical capabilities where you feel they should be in your own head, you should always salute them and make them feel comfortable because they've you don't know the battles people are facing to take that first step into the gym. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So when they do come in, you need to make them feel welcome. And specifically, if you come into a gym and then with the whole uh, body dysmorphia, you're seeing people who look amazing, etc. You're thinking, sugar, I don't look as good as this man. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you've always got to say everyone's on their own journey and you've got to help everyone. And you mentioned uh, before we started the podcast, mind, body, soul. Do you want to elaborate on that? Oh, mind, body, soul, it's a must. Uh, I incorporate that with pretty much every single client. Uh, the mind in itself... Do you know, uh, it's very important. You know, if we're exercising our body three to four times a week, when was the last time we exercised our mind? And exercising the mind could be anything. It could be reading. It could be doing your time table. When was the last time you done your time table other than school? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Time ago. When was the last time we picked up a book and read a bit of biology? Do you know? So the mind's very important to keep it ticking because yeah. what's going to happen is your body will get old and so will your mind. We don't want that, do we? We want to stay on board with our mind also. So this is why I say every action should have a purpose and every purpose should have a meaning. So therefore, when I've got a client coming in, I'll tell them this is the exercise we're doing. This is the reason we're doing. This is where it's hitting. And so they know now. So they're not only invested. So, you know, you're paying a substantial amount of money. Personal training itself is not yeah. a necessity. It's a luxury. So if you're paying me for personal training, I don't want you to just come, do what I've told you to do and go. So you've learned something now. That what you've learned, you could pass it on to your wife, you could pass it on to your kids, you could pass it on to your uncle, aunt, etc. So it's embedded in you. Yeah. So your mind should always be active. Uh, and with the soul side of it is, I'm a firm believer, you know what I mean? You should uh, have some sort of spiritual connection. Because if you don't, I feel like you're going to be lost in this world. Okay. Uh, and for me personally, uh, you know, religion's a very uh, a personal, a personal issue or personal topic. Uh, for me personally, like I says, uh, the faith in itself keeps me grounded uh, and keeps everything in place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I base my day around my prayers. 
Do you know what I mean? So hypothetically talking, if I was going to wake up to do fasted cardio at half six, Fajr is at six, so I know I pray Fajr at six, then I'll do my fasted cardio, then I'll do my clients, I'll finish before Zohar, get home, pray Zohar, then I'll continue, rest till Usr, and then get to the gym, pray Maghrib there, and then when I finish the day, Isha. So that's how I plan my days, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, there's a saying, and the saying goes, um, when you have a busy life, prayer becomes hard, but... If you pray hard in a busy life, your busy life becomes easy. It's a powerful quote. Oh, that is deep. And at this moment in time, I feel like a lot of people just focus on body because everybody wants to look good. There's it's a lot aesthetics, of pressure to look it, You good. know what I mean? And I say this again. Uh, you know, we live in a society in terms of we judge by how one looks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whether that's physical appearance or whether that's what they're driving or how many followers they got or how many likes they got. And it's... It's a rubbish society we live in, but that's a society we live in and we've got to accept that. That will never, ever change. And then what I always say with this, and it's a fair saying which I've said before, is you don't judge a book by its cover. However, if the cover don't look good, the society we live in, we're not going to ever pick that book up to read it. And then but if one picks that book up to read it, just make sure your content's good also. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So do both. Yeah, yeah. So do both, but obviously making sure you're looking good is, it, is a must. Is important. Uh, what what do you feel like with this generation? Why is it so important to look good then with social media and Instagram? Because, you know, it's so, everything is so accessible. When I say accessible is like I said, you go on social media and you will see Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Rolexes and APs and amazing looking physiques, etc. And people on amazing holidays and you're thinking, that is it. Do you know what I mean? Because you're seeing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Your mind's looking at that and you're thinking, yeah, man, this is so accessible. But then you're not seeing behind the scenes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot going behind the scenes. And as a young generation, whatever we see, we're thinking, yeah, man, this is it now. This is what we, this is so easy. Do you know? Yeah. But we're not looking at the craft in it, the, the graft in itself. Do you know what I mean? We're just looking at the finished product. And because of that, obviously, we're just thinking, we want that, we want that, we want that. But we're not looking at what's behind it. And like I said, in terms of physiques, et cetera, with the generation, you know, I could say for myself, you know, hand on heart, uh, if you look at my pictures on Instagram, I'll only post my best pictures. I'll probably take yeah. 20 pictures and I'll choose my best one. Yeah. Do you know exactly what I mean? Why don't I choose the other 19? Do you know? And then same, when I'm bodybuilding, I take, when I'm getting ready for show, I don't always look how I look on show. Do you know what I mean? Because you can only look like that for a certain period of time. But I'll get enough content to have for the rest of the year. But you can't always physically look like that. But for the outside person, when he sees that, he's going to be like, oh, it looks amazing. But you, you can't to... always look like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's normal not to look like that all the time and it's normal not to drive a lamborghini it's normal not to drive a lamborghini it's normal not to have a rolex yeah Do you know what i mean what are your thoughts on materialistic possessions then there's nothing wrong with liking materialistic things but stay in your means uh you know we all like good things you know and it's there's nothing wrong with liking good things but don't think you're going to get the happiness from the materialistic things. Yeah. Because that's where the wrong thing is. If you're thinking, you know, I'm going to buy this Louis Vuitton bag and it's going to make me happy. It'll give you that little satisfaction for them two, three hours. But then after that, it's gone in it. Won't mean so you've got to find them in other places. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm a firm believer of that. But there's like, the same, like I said, there's nothing wrong with materialistic things. And I have this conversation openly with a lot of my friends and they're saying, but it's easy for you to say. You, you know, level, because yeah. obviously you're covered in materialistic stuff, etc. But I always say the materialistic stuff is not for my happiness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and same, don't break your back or break your, like, you know, stay in your means. Because like I said, the younger generation now, we're going to look at certain things and they're going to think, you know, we need X, Y, and Z because X, Y, and Z has got it. Yeah. You know, in your time it will come. Do you know what I mean? And if it's not meant to come, it's not meant to come. Just be content with what we've got. Yeah, I think we're living in a generation, uh, I was talking about it with a friend earlier and uh, I think he's, he's on about 20, 25,000 pound a year, I won't mention his name and uh, he's getting pressured to have this big wedding, you know how Asians have these crazy weddings and spend 20, 30, 40, 50,000 pound and he's getting a personal loan for it. So, you know, I was sitting down with him and doing the numbers and he's on 20,000 pound a year and he's getting pressured into getting a 20, 30,000 pound loan, 5, 6% interest that he's going to be paying off for 6, 7 years just because of the pressure that society gives you and how normalized it is for Asians to have this shabang kind it's, of wedding. It's crazy, you know, and I've got large, like I said, I'd say 90% of my following in the South Asian community. Yeah. And the pressures we have as a South Asian community is absolutely shocking, you know. Uh, 
And I'm a firm believer of that, you know what I mean? I've practiced what I preach. I'm the love, got married not long ago. There was no wedding, there was just a nikah. Mashallah. And that's it, do you know what I mean? And keep it moving. That's amazing. Because, you know, you're going to do a wedding hall, hypothetically talking, a wedding hall now is going to cost you anything between 10 to 15,000 pounds, yeah? Easily, yeah. Okay. Food in itself, what we're looking at, 15, 20 grand? Easily, yeah. Wedding dress for a woman now, you minimum, you're looking at five, six grand, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, and then you're looking at the gold, and then you're looking at what you're going to wear, and then you're looking at the makeup artist, and you're looking at the Hi. the content which you're going to do, and then now we've got this car hire, Business, uh, yeah. you know, everything. And you're looking at all this for what? Just to show off and impress. And make you. someone else happy. Yeah. Where your happiness is actually not getting thought about then. And it's so common, you know what I mean? I'd be wrong to say that. Uh, you know, everyone's doing it. Everyone, literally everyone does it. We, we, this is the Asian community in itself. And um, we really need to put a stop to that. Don't right. break your back in order to make others happy. It's the right your happiness should come out. first. It's the right message to put out uh, instead of going for that external validation. You're, you're living within your means, like you just mentioned a little bit earlier. It's really good advice. Same, you know what it is. When it comes down to it, you've done this wedding. You've spent £100,000. Saturday, Sunday... The wedding day with Lima, etc. Come Monday, honeymoon, whatever. You've got your week over. Come on to the week after. Everyone's back in their home house living the thingy. You've got to pay this hundred grand off. Yeah. You've got wages. You've got your back to nine to five. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. And it don't make spend no five sense. years paying that off. But you've had an amazing wedding for them five, six days to make everyone happy and give them a great memory. But what's happened to you after that? Financially, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, impacted you for it's years got, to come. And then furthermore, people at the wedding will always say, this ain't right, this ain't right, the food wasn't right, they should have got this card. The wedding dress wasn't nice, this should have been like that. So, is never it really worth everyone. it? You can yeah. never please no one. And on the same, it comes back to that saying again, you know what I mean? You're not going to be everyone's cup of tea because if you are, you'll be a mug. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that quote. Yeah. No, small nikah gang all the way. So you had a, did you say you had a nikah in a mosque, basically? Or nikah, was it? that's it. Like I says, uh, the imam came to my house. We done wow. in the car and that's it, kept it moving, you know what I mean? That's really Mom's happy, dad's happy, I'm happy, she's happy, the most important thing. You that's, know what I mean? That's, that's very, and, very uh, rare to get a woman. Anyone that's not happy about it, you know, I can't do nothing about it. You have to deal with she's it. A, that's really good, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. really good advice and a great example because you're so successful, you're leading the way. And I think uh, for those people that maybe not even achieved half as much success as you have, putting themselves into 40, 50 grand debt, whereas you're leading the way. Don't get me wrong, like I said, the, the, uh, from my persona or yeah. from what you see you're thinking you know what he's gonna have a wedding like this and yeah. da, 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 da. instantly because remember it's, it's it don't put others first don't get me wrong i've been part of this society but i feel like with age you realize and it what's real and what's not real and, and you need to please etc but what's happening now is even people with the age are still getting sucked into that yeah uh, and it's very important anyone that's got a platform uh share something which is going to be positive or beneficial do you know what I mean? So every time you go on social media and you look at someone's story and just think what that what that post is for, is there a reason behind that? If it's not, what is it for? Is it for validation of someone else? Yeah. So you just make that into perspective. And I use social media the exact same way as I would in real life. Energies and it, if I come in here and I never got good energy off you, I would be like half and half about this podcast. So if I've got good yeah. energy, we bond and it and you, we could feel it. Yeah. On social media, if I feel energy is off and they're promoting this, bam, unfollowed, muted. I don't want that energy. Do you know what I mean? You you only want to see what you are yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, and then it goes to that same saying, and you attract what you are. Yeah. The energy you put out is the energy you're going to get. So it's, that's what it is. Have that same philosophy with social media. Have that same philosophy in life. Yeah. The energy that you want is what you give out. And the energy that you want is the energy that you want to see. And if you don't, just keep it moving. It's a powerful mindset. But yeah, listeners, don't be hiring out cars. I'm if it's in your means and it. you feel like it's going to make you happy, fair play. Yeah. I, 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 I totally understand that. However, if you're going to come out your means, etc., then it's not worth it. And you know, there's a saying which I say quite a bit, uh, levels and lanes. Know your levels, stay in your lane. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Someone's got a Bugatti, you don't need a Bugatti. Yeah. It's out of your, it's out of your, I can't get a Bugatti, it's out of mine. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I know mine, I'll stay in. You know Does it make yeah. sense? Okay. So I saw a video recently from another podcast that you did and you were talking about this current generation and how just so many things have now become acceptable. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit and have that discussion here? Uh, just in terms of the current generation and how everything is acceptable. You know, same, it's a taboo thing to talk about, but same, we'll dive into it in terms of, you know, just basic morals, basic integrity. It's all gone. Do you know what I mean? 
we'll talk about the most obvious one, OnlyFans. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? OnlyFans is just a normality now. Do you know what I mean? You'd see people, I've seen a video on TikTok earlier. There's a brother called Modine, you know, that is. I've seen his videos pop uh, up on TikTok. He does some crazy stuff, uh, yeah. So yeah, if Modine's going to see this, you know, I do tag him in there. Modine, <laughs> absolute, complete sausage, you know what I mean? The messages given out to the younger generation is totally uh, disrespectful. Do you know what I mean? He's making stuff acceptable where it shouldn't be acceptable. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you should never water down your morals and your integrity and your faith and your value for the pleasure of others. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like that's what this generation is doing. We're losing ourselves in order just to please others and mix in, uh, which I'm uh, against. So what offense. do you think is influencing that then? Do you think it's social media or? It's social media, isn't it? Like I says, what's the word that you get when you get likes? Dope, what is it? Dopamine? Dopamine, yeah. Dopamine. So when you get a like and you get a follower, etc., people are chasing that now, isn't it? So you need something on there to keep it going, to keep that. Well, how many likes have I got? Well, let me put something a bit more controversial. Do you know what I mean? I can say something on this podcast and make it absolutely blow by just saying something controversial. Yeah. Do you and know that's what, what I mean? people are addicted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is sad. And the same, but do, do people really want the message of which I'm saying? Because it could be boring to a lot of people, but then at the same time, I can say something very controversial here and it would absolutely bang. Do you know what I mean? But you've got to stay true to your morals and your integrity. Yeah, I think TikTok's done that a lot. TikTok's absolutely it's, shocking. It's, Me personally, I think it's disgraceful. Yeah. You know, there's got to be, how can I say? For TikTok now, I feel like there's got to be something in place where people can't be posting these sort of things. You know, there's certain characters on there who are being so vulgar, disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and it's so acceptable. But they know they're going to get millions of views. I've got, I've had people that I went to school with and, and or even young little kids these days and they're, they know if they just post a, a video and it'll just be like, I, this is what it feels like to suck this or something in text, that video is going to blow up and go crazy, but it comes at a cost of their values and morals, but it's going to blow up so they're going to uh, get attention. You know, I'm going to say this now. Uh, so, you know, your social media, your social media is still real. Just yeah. bear in mind that hypothetically talking, it might be a bit extreme for the podcast for the younger generation, but it's a message which needs to get out there. Everything you post on social media, on your stories, or on your timeline, or any content which you put out there, hypothetically talking, God forbid, you was to die straight after you posted that. Is that the message which you want everyone to remember you by? Uh, so, you know, is that what? So now, you know, hypothetically talking, I leave from here, I get into a car accident, I pass away. My last message would be, well, I don't know, if it was something controversial, me doing absolutely something silly, stupid, yeah. Is that what I want everyone to remember me as? Do you know what I mean? The last thing. Or when I pass, when people are scrolling on my pages, they're the messages or the pictures that they want to be seeing. So, you know, just put that into your mindset. And furthermore, you're going to be accountable for that in the hereafter anyway. So It's a good way to think, especially for the younger generation that don't have that long-term thinking and mindset. And you've got to think about that because life's not promised to no one. We're here today, we could be gone tomorrow. So Waka says, what you're putting on social media, is that what you want to be remembered as? Just, just let that sink in. Yeah. And if you're happy with that, then go for it. But if that's not what you want to be remembered as, or if that's not what you want people to know you as, because, you know, you think social media, I'll do something now, get a few likes, whatever. And I'll go back to my ways that I want to be. But then remember, you know what I mean? Life's not promised, man. You could go tomorrow. So if that's, that's what you want, yeah. well, that'd be it, man. That's a positive message to mm. put out to our listeners. Uh, so I want to bring it back to your businesses and just dive into training and nutrition. So the nutritional side of things, have you got your own nutritional brand? Yeah. So basically uh, what's happened with this is uh, in lockdown. Uh, so in lockdown, the gym was closed. Uh, I had ants in my pants. I wanted to do something. Uh, and like I says, alhamdulillah, like I says, I've been around the fitness industry for a very long time. It was about 10 years, 11, 12 years I've been in the fitness industry at the time. And I worked with various meal prep companies and I looked out what they were doing and I've worked with them myself from my own experience, what was right, what was wrong, etc. And alhamdulillah, I've got a very good network uh, of people in the food game. Uh, okay. So, you know, the likes of Farmhouse is absolutely amazing. You know, one of the best restaurants in the country by far. Very good friend of mine, Vic. Uh, okay. Pepe's, you know, obviously know them from Nationwide. Very good friend of mine, Nasa Manea. We've got Mushtaks who are in, uh, it's a sweet, it's a sweet company who are based in Asdana. You know what I mean? Yeah. They've got about seven, eight franchises. Uh, these three very good friends of mine sat down with them and I asked them, you know, where, where's the best supplier for meat, etc. Where's the best place for um, packaging? What's the best machines for cooking? 
to keeping your food in a certain way, etc. Yeah. And I invested my money in that. Uh, and obviously I know the the macros myself. So I know in terms of 200 gram of chicken is going to be 40 gram of protein and 200 gram of rice is going to be 40 gram of carbohydrates, etc. Mix to match with food, put a bit of flavor, something into it. And I made, uh, how can I say, top quality food for uh, people. And obviously everything's vacuum sealed, so it stays fresh for a longer period of time with a nationwide delivery. On the line. I've been fortunate enough, you know, I mean, from my gym members to online clients to people all around the country and then working with athletes like some Moin Ali. You know, we've got people at Birmingham City like Brendan Keller. Uh, we've got uh, Amari Miller, plays for Leeds United, doing all these lots of nutrition and stuff has been really good. So you, you can send it nationwide? Oh, yeah, nationwide. Next day delivery. Wow. Work with DHO. With DHL next day delivery. Yeah. And what does it cost for a meal then per does it can it be broken down into a meal cost or is so it a week supply will cost you sixty five pounds? Sixty five pounds. Yeah, so six pounds fifty a meal. A couple of meals a day or two meals a day. Two meals a day, sixty five pounds. Yeah, That's affordable. Pound. That's yeah. really affordable. And same like I says, just say high potato talking, so it's costing you six pounds fifty. But if you was to go to German Donner, like uh, uh, one of them boxes is costing you seven quid. I mean so you'd rather pay six pounds fifty and get good quality food which is good for your body. So yeah. right fuel. And you've, all the macros are already calculated, so you Calcul- don't need to do And furthermore, like I says, if you speak to me and you speak to me and say, well, hey, do you know what I mean? I'll put some muscle mass on. What's the best nutrition for me? I'll say, okay, this is the values that we need. Don't worry. You choose the foods, what you want. I'll send it over to the kitchen. They'll make it into your measurements and that will be made for you. So it's tailor-made to clients also. And it ties in well with your gym business yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So it all links in quite well. Yeah. So what does it cost to build up a business like that? Just to go into some sort of figures. Okay. Uh, in itself, you're going to need a premises. Uh, a kitchen or? Yeah, so remember, you're going to need a kitchen because remember, we're doing orders at a mass production. It's not like we're doing 100, 100 meals or something. We're doing 1,000 meals plus. Yeah. So you're looking at machine, then you're looking at packaging side of it. Do you know, we've not gone for the, the ordinary packaging. We made sure everything's aesthetically pleasing, but at the same time, it's vacuum sealed, so it's not a normal lid. So with vacuum seal, your food would stay fresh for up to 10 days because no air's getting into it once you open it. Uh, and then obviously, you've got the chefs. And like that was just, thankfully, you know, I mean, I had a good network and I've got the chefs on board also. So you've got them all in. Uh, so would you say you've invested about six figures into that business or? I wouldn't say six figures. I'd say roughly at around £70,000. £70,000 more into that business. And is it good profit margins? Food's very good. Yeah? Uh, food is a very good. Uh, but however, same again. With everything, you've got to weigh up the pros and the cons, you know. Uh Alhamdulillah, like I says, I worked it out in a way like I've got 500 gym members out of the 500 gym members, even if 50 of them get it, 50 times 650, you do the numbers, you've got 100 online clients out of the 100 online clients, just say 10 of them get it, six pound 50 times that, you do the numbers. And then you also look at in terms of how many people from my social media following are going to get it. Yeah, That's in week one, that's guaranteed in it. Do you know what I mean? And then that's you look at put it into another gym, put it into another gym, put it into another gym. Because mm-hmm. I like to think, you know what I mean? I've got a good... Uh, rapport with other gym members in the Midland area also. So then we supply other gyms also. Expand it out. Uh, what would you say is the reason why most companies like that fail? Up north, uh, loads of people have tried on a smaller scale, but have always failed. They always, after a couple of months, they close down. What is it that you do different that's me, allowing you to me stay Me personally, I always say with anything and everything, don't skip corners. You skip corners, you lose the edge. Don't let that go over your head, fella. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good quote. Yeah? Yeah. So don't skip corners. So making sure from the get-go, don't think about the money which you're going to make. Don't be afraid to put money out. You've got to put money out to get money in. So okay. spend money on the marketing, spend money on the packaging, spend money on chefs, spend money on good quality ingredients. Because if your customer's happy, he's going to return. Because you don't think short term, I'll get that 65 quid today and then forget about it. Finger, you want to get that 65 quid for the rest of the year. So All make sure the quality is always good. Think longevity. That's good advice. Um, so that's a really interesting business model. And where, where do you see that going in the next few years? Then I- Alhamdulillah, it's really good, you know. Uh, I can't complain. Uh, obviously, I'm just adding more stuff to the menu on a weekly bit of, well, like I says, whenever I can. And then we're just getting more variation up onto it. And food, you know what I mean? If you go to the gym, or like, it's not just based on gym people. It could be office workers. Hypothetically talking, you're working in an office and where are you going to go food? The closest place near to you, it? But Obviously, now we provide you the food we could get dropped off to you. Furthermore, what the long-term plan is, we're going to get it on Uber Eats and Just Eat. So now you'll be able to order it there and then and it'll get delivered to you, freshly in, cooked. Wow. In any of that, in the sort of West Midlands? We're working area. in the West Midlands at the moment. Yeah. 
we'll have to try that out sometime. Uh, I would have bought sense. some today if I knew you guys yeah, would have been yeah. interested. No, no, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely order some. To be fair, I'm trying to yeah. bulk up, maybe put on a little bit of weight. So I'll have to I'll have to order some of that. Yeah, I've tried percent. a few up north, but they've they've always closed up after a couple of months. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're more like one man bands trying to do it themselves, cook themselves. That yeah, kind of stuff. and see with like that, it, it's with hard. everything and anything, remember there's gonna be you've got to be able to delegate your work to people who know it better than you. And scalable. Does that make sense? So for instance, I know I'm not a good cook, so I need to get a better cooking place. Yeah. I know my packaging is not going to be good because I'm not patient. So just get someone to do the packaging. Yeah. You know, over a long period of time, that is going to run smooth. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you've paid someone and they're going to do it properly. Well, what we try to do is try to save them pennies and pounds. And then over a long period of time, you burn out and you think, I can't do this no more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You rather work at a business where you know, hypothetically talking, you're getting £600 to £1,000 a week without looking at it. Does it make sense? Yeah. It's all working that way. Rather than you spending your 12 hours there and then you're making £700, you're making an extra £100. But if you weren't there in them other 12 hours, you could have been working at somewhere else and making it somewhere else. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that's a powerful way to think. So you're able to then focus on your gym or your other ventures. Yeah, a million percent. So you put it in a way where I'm just thinking, you know what, at the end of the week, uh, I know that this this is going to get me a thousand pound. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I don't necessarily need to be there. So I'll go elsewhere and I'll work on that. Doesn't matter if the outcomes are going up. Don't get greedy. Don't think, oh, if I'd be there myself, I'm going to make my two thousand pound a week because you can make in that five pound. And then same with everything else. If I give all my time into this, then my gym's going to go down the ground. My clients will go down the pan. Um, yeah. Online coaching will go down the pan. I've got to make sure I've given an equal amount of time to every single Balanced place. You mentioned a couple of moments earlier, you've got quite a good network. How important would you say a network is to an entrepreneur? Uh, your network means everything. Uh, it comes to that cliche saying, and your network is your net worth. Um, and, you know, if you could go in your phone and you've got for certain things, you're nice. Uh, and for an entrepreneur now with the current society and the current uh, dynamics, you know, you need people to do your social media content. Yeah. So have you got someone reliable to do that? And same, don't be afraid to pay someone to do your social media content if it's a business you're looking for. Do you know what so I mean? Because uh, same, you know, you don't judge a book by its cover. If it don't look good, it's not going to look, if it don't look good, you're not going to pick it up to read it. So when you are taking your pictures of your food, hypothetically talking, or your clothing, if you're doing a clothing brand, make sure it's done professionally rather than on your phone. Because that first image is the Makes first impressions. Impact. You're the, the, the main. And part. how do you build relationships with all the directors and CEOs that you've now got in your network? What advice would you give to somebody that doesn't have access to, you know, like the director of Farmhouse or Pepe's or that kind of caliber of uh, of entrepreneurs? How would you then get them to engage with you and network with you? Be real to you? yourself at all times. Do you know what I mean? You're going to meet people from all walks of life. And don't just judge someone because of their status or yeah. because of where they are. Do you know what I mean? Because like I says, hypothet hypothetically talking, do you know what I mean? I could speak to someone outside now and he works in, I don't know, let's say in the post office. Yeah. I'm not going to treat him any different if he was, like I says, an owner of a multi-million pound gym. Because who knows, tomorrow he could be a multi-million multi pound owner gym. Do you know what I mean? Majority of my friends who have become very close friends were former clients. Yeah. And I've always kept it 100 real and, you know, I mean, alhamdulillah, we've become more than friends now. And built up your network in that way. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like uh, really good advice. Uh, so for an entrepreneur, uh, is there anything that you'd uh, you'd say to them regarding mental health? Not just entrepreneurs, people in general. You probably deal with situations where people come to you with mental health issues as well. Is that the case? Yeah, a million percent. Mental health is absolutely massive. Uh me personally, I don't think it's talked about enough in the South Asian community. It's a taboo thing to talk about. Yeah. Because you've got mental health, there's something wrong with you. Someone's even diabetes on you, or you know, something amongst them. Like mental health is real. There's a lot of pressures uh on men as well as women. Social media is partly to blame for it because obviously you're thinking you've got to be a certain place or a certain thingy. Uh our culture in itself is like I says, hypothetically talking, so and so's got job is ending so much, my yeah. son's doing this. You know, there's a lot of pressures. Uh, it's very important to talk. And then saying, you know, I might sound very blunt for saying this, but nine out of 10 times when someone does pass, we always say, oh, why don't you speak to us? But why weren't you speaking to them at the time? Because if you gave them that time, then they probably would have spoke to you. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I and I come down to the, the the story now, which was just as of late, you know, of the weekend, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury fought. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the boxing. The boxing weren't boxing. It was just entertainment. But the fact of the matter is, just think of Tommy Fury's mental health for that fight. It was one of the biggest viewed fights. Furthermore, he was getting absolutely slated for two years online. So just say two million people constantly trolling you, you, your wife, your child. And that's a lot to take in for a man. And but he's because, young as well. Yeah, yeah. But because he looks in a certain way and because he's from a certain clan, you'd think now he'd be able to take it. But remember, like, there's a lot to take. And at the end of it, he broke down in tears, etc. That wasn't because he fought Jake Paul. That was because all them emotions have built up onto him. And, you know, like I says, if he had lost that fight, do you know what I mean? We don't know. Could have been anything. So don't be quick to jump on the bad wagon and slay people and stuff because you don't know what's happening behind the scenes with everything. And, you know, we're quick we're, we're quick with the cancel culture right, right about now. Yeah, It's very important to look at one's perspective, where they're coming from and how, they, how they're trying to perceive something. Yeah, I think you can only really see life through your own perspective and your own eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's important to try and keep an open mind. Uh, talk to me about some of the championships that you won then. Uh, I wasn't always successful in bodybuilding. My first two shows, I didn't place. And I was yeah. thinking, bloody hell, what is happening? What is happening? But I, pers I, I persevered and I thought, you know what? I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. And then when I did win, uh, I didn't stop winning. And then after that, I think it was four years in a row, I won uh, in muscle model, classical bodybuilding, classical bodybuilding, classical bodybuilding. So let's talk about mindset then. How do you keep yourself motivated or disciplined when you're failing and you're not winning? What kind of things did you do? So in psychology, there's two things. There's called NAF and NACH. Need to avoid failure and need to achieve. So when I say need to avoid failure is hypothetically talking. I can't fail because uh, I'm going to disappoint my mom. Yeah. Or I can't fail because I really want to win that trophy. Two different types of motivation. Does it make sense? Yeah. So what I'd always do is I'd put all that pressure on me and I'd always post it on social media. So I utilize social media as m being accountable to the thousands of people. So if you're getting seven, 8,000 views on your social media, I'd say, I'm being accountable. I'm doing my cardio. I've finished my cardio. I've ate my food. I'm accountable. So I was building that, building that, building that. Now I can't fail. I need to achieve. I, I, I need to avoid failure. Do you know what I mean? So every time I'm trying to do something, I always put it out there. So now I'm going to make sure I'm going through this. I'm going to go through it. That's why I put it, every time I'm trying to do something, I always put it out there. Yeah. So now there's no going back from this mindset into it. I'm not leaving this. That's a good mindset to have. And how do you stay disciplined then? To be fair, in all fairness, there's no magic formula to discipline for myself. I would like to think I've always been a disciplined individual. Uh, with me, with the bodybuilding side of it, it's just, it comes, it's a lifestyle. However, with life in itself, I've got certain things which need to be done. So I've, I follow a protocol in life uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's called uh, control, conquer and conclude. So in the morning, I like to control the day. So before the morning, uh, when the morning starts, you know what I mean? I get my water, I pray my fajr, uh, I won't listen to no music and I really try to control the day. Before late afternoon, I want to conquer. So by whatever's the biggest task of the day before late afternoon that needs to be completed. For me, it's training. So I need to make sure I've trained before two o'clock because then I've conquered the day. And then conclude the day at the end of the night when it comes to eight, nine o'clock, phones off, everything conclude, just refresh, spend time with your loved ones. Okay. So control, conquer, conclude. That's the way I do my three things in a day. That's uh, really good advice for the listeners. I'll, I'll get that in there. And uh, in terms of a day in the life of your life, what would you say that looks like? Did you say you wake up for Fajr time? So or? yeah, every morning wake up for Fajr. Uh, I'll get to the gym. Uh, I've got members of staff who work there. I'd go in there. I'll do two free clients. Uh, then I'd train myself. But everything's worked around, like I said, like I previously mentioned. So I'd wake up. I'd pray my salah. I'd get to the gym. Uh, I'd train two free clients. While I'm training my two free clients, I'll get my meal in. Then I'd train. After I've trained, I'll get my post-workout meal in. I'd pray uh, Zohar. Then I'd get my other meal in go home that's my time to go home switch off for two hours shower change prayer get back to the gym for the evening do a couple of clients and then my grip and then before you shower i want to be home uh and then obviously i've got members of staff which i look at and obviously what's coming in what's coming out wages bills etc but alhamdulillah with that aspect like we mentioned before with any business you've got to have reliable people and you can't be afraid to pay them 
Yeah. Because you know what I mean? Because they're the ones who are doing your grind work for you. So you've got the right team around you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I'm very fortunate for that. And uh, is there any health advice or, or sort of tips that you'd give for, to individuals to be physically more healthy? Uh, me personally, like I said, it's very simple. Do you know what I mean? Don't overdo it. Like I said, eat whatever you like as long as it's not fried. That, that's not bad, isn't it? As long as it's not fried? As long as it's not fried. Okay. Eat what you like. That's a good start. Second thing is get yourself a watch, a Fitbit. It costs about £15 off Amazon. Measure your steps on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you get 10,000 steps in daily, you're on a good start. If you could do that for two weeks, then take the next step. What will the next step be? Get my water intake to two and a half, three litres. So now we've got our steps in. We've got no oily food and we've got the water intake. The following week, let's try to go to the gym three times a week. So now you've got your food in place, you've got your diet in place, you've got your water in place, and you've got your gym in place. So therefore, it's not so much you're chucking your straps to the deep end. Yeah. So you're taking them small steps and you'll enjoy the process. And with the gym and with your health and your fitness, etc., enjoy the journey. What we're trying to do now is we're pushing ourselves so much and we're actually not enjoying the journey of what we're doing. That's correct. And is there any sort of uh, supplements that you'd recommend taking or is that? Yeah, supplements, uh, they are necessities which you need to take. Uh, okay. Current climate, vitamin C, absolute necessity. You know, with the colds or even when you're exercising, et cetera, your body's going to go under certain pressures. Immune system's going to come under pressure. Vitamin C will always keep you going and keep your immune system from crashing. Uh, obviously, you says from uh, the viewers, majority South Asian, so South Asian, 99% of people will have a vitamin D deficiency yeah. simply because our ancestors, etc., were born in the subcontinent where it was warm. We're not getting that sunshine now, so get a vitamin D in here. Um, B12, anyone that's an entrepreneur or, you know, aspiring to be, you're working long shifts, you want to keep your vitamin B12 level high to, in order to make sure we're getting that good energy back into us, red blood cells, etc. So get them three in as a must. And then obviously multivitamins just to making sure we're not missing nothing. That's good advice. And uh, in terms of business, I'm just going to throw a couple of questions at you. Uh, one of them is, what's been your biggest success in business to date? Uh, biggest success to date in business? You know, alhamdulillah, I've been very fortunate. I've won all the accolades you could possibly think of, from Pakistan Achievement Awards to, uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Brit Asia Awards. There's uh, Pakistan Music Media Awards. So these are all big accolades, uh, Birmingham Business Awards. You know, I've won them all, you know what I mean, for successful yeah. business and excellence in health and fitness, etc. But for me personally, the one that shines out of it most is having the same team with me, which I started with till now. You know what I mean? Nothing's changed. I'm still with the same people that I started with that have been close to me. And how have you been able to retain them and, and keep them? We've been real to each other. Do you know what I mean? There's no... You know, with anything in life, you know, there's there's a famous saying and it's quoted by the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Don't quote me on it exactly where I'm saying it, but this is what it comes about. You're not a true believer until what you love for yourself is what you love for your brother. Yeah, yeah? I've heard that. So what you love for yourself, make sure you want that same for your brother. And that don't mean necessarily blood brother, that could be the people around you. So if you've got that mindset, bam, it's it's a winner. And what advice would you give to people, entrepreneurs or people that wanted to start up their own businesses? Like, what would you give yourself? How old are you now? Did you, did you mention 32. on the podcast? 32. 32. So 32. what advice would you give to yourself maybe 10 years ago if you were starting off again, if you could? Advice I'd give to myself uh, 10 years ago would be slow down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, slow down because we just live in the fast lane. Yeah. We want everything fast. We want to do everything like this. And then we lose a lot of the stuff, which actually means valuable things to us. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. Uh, the business in itself is, you know, it's got to come. But don't lose all that time spending it with your loved ones, your kids, your wife, your mum, because that time won't come back. Uh, furthermore, in terms of the business side of it is, is make sure you work on the pros and the cons. Don't just think about the money coming in. Think about the money that's going to go out. Furthermore, don't just think for the sake of it Hypothetically talking, you open a pizza shop, you can open that pizza shop, is why are people going to come to your shop? Give me a reason, I don't know. Why? You're going to have better food. How are people going to know you've got better food than the person over there? Are you going to make the prices lower than that person? Is that going to come into your margins? 
And as a CEO, do you manage all the areas of your business, like the sales, the marketing, the branding? Yeah, everything. Yeah, you, I, 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 I work with it all. Uh, and that's simply not because I'm a control freak or anything, because <laughs> I feel like, because I've done this for such a long time. When I say I manage it here, so for instance, I know what content I need. Yeah. So I'll get someone to make that content and I'll post it up. Does it make sense? Yeah. Uh, sales side of it is we know how many sales we need to get. Where's that going to come from? Is that going to come from door to door sales? Is that going to come from social media marketing? So I've always realized, alhamdulillah, I've got a good social media following, but I'll give you an example now. So obviously I was brought up in Borsa Leaf. I've moved to uh, the gyms in Sutton Coalfield. I live in an area called Warmly. And because you think Borsa Leaf, South Asian, everyone's going to know me, but not everyone knows you because yeah. not everyone's got social media. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. a generation that don't have it. So now you'll have to do leaflets, etc. You'll have to go back to old schools. There's no right or wrong way. Okay. And how do you manage your time between the different businesses? Do you just set a certain amount of time for each business? The same. There's a certain set amount of time of everything. So I've, I've planned my day. And you know, it's, it's little, little, little things. You know what I mean? Just plan your day. Go on your notes and just plan your day. And it just puts structure into your life. So once you've got structure in your life, you know if you've had a successful day or an unsuccessful day. Because if you're just going with the motion, you're never going to know. Yeah. yeah, I'll just do it tomorrow. That's right. But if you write it there, you're thinking, damn, I failed that today, man. Yeah. You do you, do you have done. any habits that you recommend? Hey, downtime. Do you know, don't be so, you know, like I'm in a position uh, and by no means, you know, I mean, I'm by no means I'm, I wouldn't say I'm as successful as other people that have been on the podcast, etc. But I'm in a position now where I'm just chilled, you know what I mean? And I've got so many opportunities to do so much more. But I said to myself, no. Why? Because what am I going to do in order, what am I going to achieve now, which is going to make my life better? You know, getting an extra hundred grand, no, because I'd rather have that time I could spend with my wife, I could spend with my, my loved ones. So I don't, I'm content. Yeah. And the, that's the biggest thing in life, be content. If you're content, you've completed life. Do you know what I mean? Whether that's working in a post office or being a multiple gym owner, just be content. Once you're content, bam, you've completed life. Yeah. So with me, like I said, I work Monday to Friday. Uh, Friday will be a spiritual day for myself. So that's Juma Graveyard, uh, Arabic. Uh, and then Saturday I'll spend with uh, my family and loved ones, uh, whether that's at the boxing or whether at the villa or a bit of golf. And then <laughs> Sunday is just my day just to recuperate, get ready for Monday. So you've got a good work-life balance, would you say? Yeah, yeah. and it's a must to have that. There's, there's uh, what's the word? There's a formula which I read. There's three things in life. There's your relationship. So that could be your loved ones. It could be your, in, like your wife, etc. Then there's your business, which is your financial. So there's your relationship, finance, and health. If I was to give 100% to my relationship, my finance, and my health is not going to be where it needs to be in it because I'm giving 100% there. Yeah. If I was to give 100% to my finance, it would be my gym. I'm not going to spend enough time with my family, loved ones. I'm not going to have enough time to train, etc. And if I was to go 100% on my health, I'm not going to have enough time on my family and loved ones and neither will I have enough time on my business. So what do you do? You balance it out. And that don't mean you're going to elevate at a greater scale, but you'll have a balanced life where everything will move in a... In a, in a nicer pace. But what we tend to do is we put 100% into the finance side of it. Yeah. And in that time, we lose our health and we lose our relationship. You don't realize. Does it make yeah, sense? Yeah. So have a little balance in it. It's good. I find it hard to switch off, to be fair. When you're when you're working on business or you're, you're dealing with issues, it's hard to come yeah, on Yeah, then everything else is gone, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Then you lose that. Do you know what I mean? Then your relationship could get start deteriorating. Yeah. You know, if you've got kids, the kids are going to think, I've never spent time with you. If you've got a wife, wife's going to think, I've never seen him. Your mom's going to say, when was the last time I seen him? Do you know what I mean? And over a period of time, it'll deteriorate, deteriorate, deteriorate. And then it's be end up same thing. You're so involved in your business, your health's going to go out the window. When was the last time you went to the gym? When did you do your run? When did you eat your food on time? No. But then if I was going the other way, like I said, if I weren't going on my business and I was just looking at my health, constantly in the gym in the morning, gym in the night, gym in the afternoon, I want this food, this food, this food. It's just about you. Then you forget about your relationship and you forget about work. So have that little balance. Yeah. 33% so in every single that's, one. That's a good way to do it. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, try and implement that into my yeah. own life. Uh, so leading on to that is what do you see success as in your eyes? Success in my eyes is contentment. Uh, when I look at certain individuals and they're not as blessed as other individuals financially, but they're happier, I think they're more successful. 
Uh, I always look at success as contentment. If one's happy, that's successful. And what I said last time was, and it's a quote which I'll say again is, if you can wake up every single morning smiling, you're successful. So that's my uh, tip of the day today. So success for me in my eyes is if you could wake up every single morning smiling, you are successful. Um, so just concluding then, uh, what do you say the future is for yourself? Uh, the future for myself is, um, to be fair, I would, I would like to do some work abroad. Uh, and that's not for financial gains, that's to see how I could take my skill set abroad. Uh, and that could be in a third world country or it could be somewhere in the Middle East, but I just want to see where I could, how can I put my work into place uh, somewhere abroad? Because you know they say, if you've got knowledge, you should always try to share it. So I want to see if I could share my knowledge in the places where it's more needed, where social media is not around. Yeah, away from social media. Away from social media, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if people want to follow you, where can they find you? Uh, Wahid Aesthetic on all platforms. Yeah, you've got the same handle on all platforms. Every single one. Yeah, lucky there. It's hard to get hold of you got the website URL as well? Or? The website as well. <laughs> yeah, somebody might buy that. Uh, no, thank you very much. It's been an interesting uh, conversation. Just to conclude, is there any other books or anything that you'd uh, recommend to uh, to the, the people watching this? What would I recommend uh, in order for reading, etc.? You know, it's funny because I've only started reading 50 Cent's uh, biography. Have you read that? I've not read it, no. I have a read on that. Yeah, I'll just recommend that. It's only because I've just started reading it now. That's a good one to read. Yeah, he's yeah. had a crazy life. Yeah. I'll be and he's quite smart. Yeah. You, you wouldn't believe how smart he is. So he said this one thing. So he were, he's never ever smoked or drank in his life. He's never smoked in his life. And uh, he knew that people around him like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, etc. used to smoke and, you know, be not in their senses. So whenever he used to go to parties, he'd pretend he's taking a puff, but not take a puff. And they'd make the decisions and he'd be clear cut on what decisions he's making. Yeah. Yeah, smart guy, smart individual. Very, very smart guy. Would you, just touching on that, would you have any recommendations as a personal trainer on how bad shisha is for you, is it? Shisha's very bad. Uh, same, you know what I mean? I don't want to upset my friends who do own shisha lounges, but uh, I'm going to keep it real raw. Shisha is no good for you. Isn't it? Nah, it's going to tar up your lungs, isn't it? You know what I mean? Anything that's, in there. Anything that's affecting your body uh, in that way is no good for you. Uh, when I came in, you see me take a Siberian, which is a snooze. Yeah. That's not bad for your body. It's not damaging me in any form or way. Okay. And it's not intoxication either. I'm and just clarifying that with you, just okay. in case you thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people stay off the shisha. Stay off the shisha. Stay off anything that's going to harm your body. Anything that you feel is not going to benefit you in no way, uh, it's no good for you. Because remember, like I said, these bodies in ourselves, they're manas, and they're given to us. Uh, so treat them in the best possible way. And like I says, are we ready for the times which are going to come? Are we going to be ready enough to fight? No chance. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go into another topic now, but yeah, man. Yeah, that's deep. Huh? No, I think we'll definitely have a part two at some point. It's been really interesting. And yeah, man, a million percent. You know, I, I, it's been great being on this podcast, uh, but it will be so nice to touch up on current affairs. You know, for instance, what Sam Smith's doing, Do you know, the, 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 the hypocrisy of that, the Qatar World Cup, how everything yeah. went about that, the Ukraine, Russia war. You All know, those These topics, are little things yeah. which people need to talk about so and say just what the Just touching upon that quickly for a couple of minutes. So w what is it about him that you would say you'd want to discuss? How that? can one like Sam Smith not get cancelled where he's promoting that, yeah? Where someone like Andrew Tate has never said nothing of that. So it just goes to show what is the what does the media want us to do? What's acceptable in society and what's yeah, not? Yeah, you know what I mean? So they've just made, yeah, that's acceptable now. Do you know what I mean? Kids are not seeing it. It's disgraceful. It's horrendous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's bad. It doesn't matter what kind of influences uh, there are. Some don't seem to get cancelled regardless of how crazy they, they, they sort of influence our younger society, whereas others are instantly cancelled. Instantly cancelled. And if you actually look down and you actually look at the reason why they're getting cancelled, it don't actually make sense. But whereas these other ones are just... It's, it's like a norm, it's normality now, like, yeah. it's, it's acceptable, you've got to take that, it's normal. Yeah, you even though I mean? if some of the messages, like Andrew Tate, some of his message is positive, a lot of what he says. I'd say 90% of his stuff is positive, the 10% which he says is just trolling and for clickbaits. When you actually look down the deep down of what he's saying and everything, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. We're living in interesting times, uh, to say the least. Interesting, and I could only see it getting worse. Yeah. And, you know, I've said this before on a previous podcast, like it's a cycle, and it? 
and it's going all the way around to really bad and I'm just hoping it's going to crash now and it's going to come back to normality yeah Did you know that you're hoping we're at that stage of yeah, the cycle yeah, yeah. because it's at that stage now because we've literally seen everything and everything is just banned on accessible uh, or acceptable I've seen a, a newspaper article yesterday and Piers Morgan talking about it is is in the the Bible they're gonna they're gonna make God transgender uh, so he can neither be a he uh, because obviously of equality and stuff and I'm thinking everyone should be going absolutely ballistic do you know and what I mean and they're changing the and terminology they're change everyone should be going really mad about that do you know what I mean but it's now nah, it's fine it's normal do you know what I mean I think like everyone needs to really put their down to go man this can't be happening you know what I yeah. mean and then they're saying a baby can't be referred to as a baby no more because a baby's like uh, it needs to be a thigh bee uh, thigh bee is uh, that what they're calling them a now a thigh bee now yeah and then <laughs> <laughs> it's just ridiculous you know I think that there needs to be a level at where it stops and I think for me one of the things that I saw on social media was you can change your sex from as young as four I think somebody somebody in parliament was trying to put that through I don't know how true it is so don't quote me on it no I've seen that as well and then furthermore there's not two genders now there was like 76 different type of genders you could choose from now 76 <laughs> genders and uh, yeah you, how are you guys supposed to teach kids 76 different type of genders I do not know and you can change your sex at the age of four which is just mind-blowing to be able to make that decision kids, at such a young kids age. normal yeah. yeah it's as simple as that yeah, it's, it's, it's the sh- I feel like really we good. could have a whole hour podcast on this. It's late, so I'm not going to keep you too much longer. <laughs> but I feel like definitely in part two, it would be interesting to have these kind of discussions. You're open-minded individual with a good oh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, uh, mindset and perspective, uh, which I like. And you know, with anything in life, you've got to respect one's opinion or you've got to respect one's belief Yeah. on every aspect. Does it make sense? Yeah. But as long as that belief's not pushed up onto you and it's up in your face etc that's when it gets slightly too much but you need to be uh, mature enough uh, and open-minded enough to have an open discussion yeah. and if you can't have an open discussion then you need to know more about what your belief is yeah does that make absolutely. sense absolutely because I feel like now we're in the society if someone wants to speak to you about something you're quick to say no 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 but have that discussion like hypothetically talking the whole Black Lives Matter thing People should really talk about it and really speak about why the Black Lives Matter is, what, what, why do people feel offended by this, etc. Because some people genuinely won't know. Yeah. Does that I, make I sense? Open-minded discussions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can only so, see life through your and, perspective. And like that, people will only learn and people will understand. Yeah. But if we're just going to say no, then they will never ever know. You just have a closed mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't work. No, it was really interesting. And thank you very much for coming onto the podcast. I feel like we covered a fair few topics in the in the hour that we've had. So it's been really insightful. And uh, hopefully the listeners have learned a fair few things as well. So thank you very much. And inshallah, we love a part two. Thank you Go very deeper. much. I'm going to close the podcast on famous thing, which I always say, love, manners, respect, wahid is fetic.